Hey TechEds, this is Tech Ed Kirsch, and in this video, I'm going to explain the common issues you might run into as a PCB designer or hardware engineer when working with component libraries in any ECAD software, and also how you can solve those problems using Altium Designer and the Altium 365 workspace. If you don't have Altium Designer, you can actually follow along in this video by clicking on the link below. This will give you a free trial access to Altium Designer or a discount to Altium, especially if you're looking to buy Altium. So I will show you the features in Altium Designer and Altium 365 that totally streamline the flow and process of component library management. But first, I want to talk about these issues that we typically run into as PCB designers in hardware engineering. So creating a component library is a daunting task, or it can be. It can involve manually documenting or specking all of the components you need, creating a database to track them, and using some web interface to access them. The first challenge with this approach is ensuring that all components in your libraries are up to date. This means regularly checking for new versions or changes to existing components. This can be a difficult task if the library is large and you have components from multiple sources. So that's challenge number one. Another challenge is to ensure that the components are even compatible with the hardware you're designing. This means checking that the components will work with the power and signal requirements of the board and that the electrical characteristics of the components are even suitable for your application. Finally, the components often need to be sourced from multiple suppliers. This can be a challenge if you need to find the best price for a component or if you need to find a supplier with a particular type of component. Oftentimes dealing with like magnetics, I have a component that can only be made by one manufacturer. So if that component is not available, I have to wait on that manufacturer or make sure I buy up enough components early so that I don't get held up anywhere in the process on one component. These are just a few of the challenges managing component libraries as a hardware engineer or PCB designer. Here are the features that have massively helped me improve my component library productivity as a hardware engineer working in Altium Designer. So the first thing is being able to import existing libraries. I typically work with or used to work with component libraries that I would have to download locally and then do like a file open open the library, modify the manual footprint, like modify it manually and everything, right? And working with these physical footprints right here. And then I would manually copy over the footprints and then like, especially for parts that need three different types of footprints, three different size footprints for least, most copper and nominal copper, where I typically use the nominal copper for depending on the class a PCB I'm working with, right? I then have to associate that footprint or those three footprints with a schematic symbol locally and then store those files somewhere on a share drive or like a network drive for my team. Hopefully they know and can keep track of where, where that footprint is. But let's say it's 12 years later and they still want to use that component. Like there's a new engineer who comes in and this is what happened to me. There's a new engineer who comes in and they don't know where to find anything and there's no link in the database like Agile or Arena to let me know where this footprint is. So I'm going to show you the different benefits that I like using the Altium 365 environment for to solve all of these issues because it just it just wastes so much time doing it locally and manually like this. Okay, so the first thing to note is the library importer. Not only can you go to File Library Importer and import one PCB library, integrated library, database library, whatever the case may be, you can import multiple. So I really like that. I'm going to import just one library file, one capacitor. So here we've got this capacitor and then I'll just open this. So now what happens is it finds similar components that are in your library, right? And it tries to it tries to categorize your component, your device into the correct category within your online workspace. So here we have the import preview underneath components. Is this in capacitors, right? And it sure enough is, and then it's, you know, just wondering to validate that this is the correct location to put it. 
And then I would put an information here, like what is the capacitance of this capacitor? This is a 0 0.001 microfarad capacitor. And when I hit enter, it changes it automatically to one nanofarad. I would validate this. It has a warning, you know, there's like duplicated parameters. So there's also that thing. It will let you know, hey, you have this already. So I love that. But you can go ahead and click import anyway. And then it will try to compile and then it'll let you know if you, you have a failure or whatnot. So I'll just go along with this and import. Okay, so it's imported and then I can close the library importer. So the first thing I like is, yeah, being able to import existing libraries. The next feature is editing shared components in the component editor. So if I go into my schematic, right, and I want to place the component I just imported, go to my components, I can put in the manufacturer part number and then find this. I can go to right click and edit this component. And here on the components panel, there's a lot of information. It lets me know what components of this manufacturer part number, what is the design item ID, what's the availability for the part, what are the models being used for the schematic symbol, what is the footprint being used for this, and where where is the part being used amongst my designs within my workspace. This is the best feature in my opinion. So you can import components, you can figure out where it's used in your projects and you can do other things like edit this. So let me edit the schematic symbol for this and you can edit the shared model, meaning that any other design that's using this component schematic symbol, you can click on the schematic symbol, modify it, and it will be modified and updated across every other part that uses this symbol. So in this case, you'd want to keep this sort of kind of generic for the symbol. I'd go to panel properties and then see how it has that like generic design item ID manufacturer part number. And I can add more information in here if I want, like for instance, if I put this and then edit supplier links, add, and then it pulls from the comment to find the manufacturer part number automatically. And then if I want to make sure that this is correct, I can click on the link here it will automatically take me to Octopart. Octopart is a website that lets you know where all, pretty much all copies of a device you're looking for is located on the web. Okay, if you're a hardware engineer, you gotta definitely start using Octopart if you're not already. And you can click on the CAD models link to access the CAD models. Octopart can compile and does compile the CAD models across a lot of the web, and then you can download the files, preview them and all that. Okay, so that's the easy way to access Octopart and access parts through Octopart. So the next thing I'll do is click OK, you know, add my parameters and all that stuff. And this will update for any device that's using this schematic symbol and this PCB footprint. Now, this editing also goes for the PCB footprint and it's still also stored in the cloud. So that's what I like. You can edit the, edit the component the schematic symbols and everything, and it affects everything else in your libraries. The next feature I like is being able to import the data from Octopart directly into the component, right? So here, I, when I'm modifying the component, I can click on this ellipses, then it will look for the manufacturer part number. Then I can click on this and click OK. And what happens, this will automatically update data from Octopart. And here's the big thing, the data sheets. That's another thing. So not only can you update your components, but you can add data sheets to your workspace, your own workspace. And you'll always have access to these data sheets as opposed to relying on links to the manufacturer's website where they could change the links, you know, at a moment's notice and you're not sure you're out of luck where they are because you didn't download them. Don't worry about that anymore. You can put it in your workspace. So not only can you do the library import for multiple libraries or a single library, the next is you can modify any of these schematic or footprint symbols. They'll be updated across all of your devices that use these symbols. Third, you got the automatic 
octopart import parameter update option. Okay, so we'll just call that parameter updates. Four, you can add a data sheet directly to your workspace. You can even go into your advanced setting and choose or create a different type of component template. I won't get into component templates, that gets into some real depth there, but just know that if you want it, you could create your own device templates, any device you want. And so that's another amazing feature to manage your whole workspace for your team. So what I'll do is right click, close and update this device and it will save it to the server. I can hit cancel to fix the violations and release this later. So I can double click on this. See revision is out of date. So what you can do is click on here and it, it see it automatically detects your, your revision. So this has version control for your devices. That's another thing I love about it. So I don't have to deal with this manual database stuff, this mess with the manual database thing. So click the update to latest, right? Update to latest. And then if I try to save this to my server, it gets saved. I'll right click save, it validates. You say, you know, uh, updated data sheets or something. Okay, so the other thing I want to show you is the where used feature. Right now, I'll just go ahead and delete this capacitor, right? Close that. And I can search for this capacitor using the 0 0.01 microfarad value that I had put in earlier. If I click on here, there's more information about this part that my workspace can provide that I normally wouldn't get uh, if I just have the local file there and I have to open up the footprint and the schematic symbol and then double check and make sure everything. I don't have to do all that manually. I could just do it right here. And here I have the references and the data sheet. So depending on your schematic symbol, you know, or, you know, the schematic symbol you're using for the PCB footprint references, files and whatnot, they'll pull up here. Make sure you hit the information key for component details. And notice it says where used, not used in any project. What you want to do is right click place the device here, right click, and then I'll just annotate this. Maybe I'll say it's a C11. Now what I'll do is save my design, then save this to the server. Now that that's saved to my server, let's say another engineer comes along and he or she says, hey, I'm working on a new design. I don't want to create new components or have to import anything. I just want to get going, but I don't want to use generic components. I want to use devices and components that are pre-approved already and in our system. So what does that mean then? Uh, well, the engineer can go into panels, components, pull up the library, look in capacitors, and he can see, or she can see that this is a verified device for them. Well, it may not necessarily be verified, but at the very least they know that this is a capacitor that is already in use in another project. And also let's say they don't want to make it, let's say they don't want to use it in another project. Let's say they want to get rid of all copies and they want to know where all, what are all the projects this device has been used. So it'll show all of the projects it's been used and you can click on that project and it will pull that up. Okay. So the where used feature, I would say saves me absolutely the most amount of time when I'm coming into a new design or a new company or a new client and they have libraries that they want me to use those libraries. But then, uh, you know, I have to spend so much time looking for the right components and they have multiple libraries that have pretty much the same footprint of with their capacitors and everything. And the one they want me to use specifically happens to be obsolete. And it, it's just a, it's just a hairy situation. I prefer working with component libraries that I, I've imported that all of the company can see that I don't have to go hunting around for to get into a project. Okay, so those are the main benefits of using the Altium 365 work, uh, workspace.
but I do want to show you one more thing. So if you go to your panels and then choose the Explorer option, so this will give you an entire health check on your component library. It will let you know how many duplicates you have. It will let you know the models for your components, what are outdated, any problems in your supply chain. So you don't have to click on each and every component, go to Octopart, figure out what's not defined, what's it not going to be in stock, what's at risk. See, if you manage all of your components this way in the Altium 365 workspace, that all of this is taken care of for you. Okay, so we've gone through a good number of benefits and you know, advanced search capabilities allow you to find precise information about the components you need from multiple sources in just a few clicks or like button presses, right? Additionally, components can be automatically synchronized with Altium's part source library ensuring that hardware engineers always have the most up-to-date information about the components. But this goes just beyond libraries and components, right? This affects the bigger picture and the systems we rely on as engineers, managers, and consumers of tech products even. Because using Altium Designer this way with the Altium 365 workspace to manage component libraries also reduces friction between teams, hardware design teams, mechanical design teams. So with shared component libraries, designers and engineers can work together on projects without needing to manually transfer data or pull components from the wrong folder on a network drive somewhere. Because Altium's 365 approach to hardware and PCB library management ensures that all components used in a design are up to date and correctly specified for the task reducing the risk of errors or omissions on that final PCB. This is literally what I've been looking for as like a solution, a cloud only solution to my hardware design problems. Okay, so if you wanna learn more about how Altium Designer can help you manage your component libraries, like this video and subscribe to this channel. For my next video, well, I'll be going into greater detail about most of the features mentioned in this video. I'll demonstrate how the new way to component library creation is so much easier in the Altium 365 workspace for a power electronic design. Until next time, keep learning.